Hello guys, this is DJ from GarageFarm.net. Welcome to our new interior series of tutorials on creating this kind of loft style bedroom. And we'll go there step by step, modeling, texturing, lighting, and different tips and tricks. So I hope you'll find some useful information throughout the course. In this tutorial we'll focus just on the parquet floor. We'll be using the Archie pack add-on to help us out and doing some texturing, uh, adding details and in the next tutorials we'll cover also creating the whole room, the walls, the ceiling, the, the lighting, modeling some assets for, for the interior, industrial style. We'll also make some points about general design concepts, making an original artwork, not just like copying a photo, going for a specific feel or vibe in the interior. Of course, you can also make your own variations of this. The interior is thought up as a loft bedroom for a rock and roll musician, factory space that's adapted for living space. So to start designing our whole room, let's find some inspiration for our design. If you're going for a project like this, uh, it's always good to look at reference photos, gather them around, make, maybe make a mood board, just to, to get some inspiration on, on the particular style. For this, there are awesome sites online. I myself used House. You can also use Pinterest or whatever suits you. Just find like photos in a specific style. Find things that you like particularly about uh, different interior designs. The raw space with the palettes used the high bay industrial lamps whatever suits your mood see the different approaches to this kind of design also very eclectic like a stylish bed in a factory like environment so you can really go crazy with the design that's the creative part about this it's good to make things like fun and interesting so look at the small details here really and just like try to find out an idea of what you would like your interior to look. And in this first tutorial I will show you how to create a wooden floor. So let's first enable the Archipack add-on in the user preferences. In fact, there are two built-in add-ons for architecture and the Archimesh and Archipack. And the one we'll be using is Archipack. So not to confuse these two, uh, we'll enable just this one. They are pretty similar, but uh, Archipack is really like more focused on making parametric uh, editable objects. And once you enable the Archipack add-on in the tools, you have a new tab here, an Archipack Tools tab. There are some options here. Uh, there's an option to, re to render the preset thumbs. If you want to check out how to render the thumbs, here's a link to a video showing how to do that. You can also use the add-on without rendering the thumbs. So also, if you press Shift A, you get Add Mesh Archipack. So the same elements here, accessible through this menu here. So first let's delete our default cube and let's make sure that our scene turned to cycles, that we have our unit set to metric meters so that we'll be using real world dimensions and let's go to the create tab here. Let's maybe close this one and there we have our objects and we will be creating the floor. There are different different kinds of, of floor here. We'll be going for the herringbone and here in the panel on the right there are Archimesh flooring setups so we can always choose and change the preset we select the herringbone if you select this to be wireframe you can see how the boards are really looking and to create a subtle joint effect like the V joint here we'll add a bevel to this one millimeter is quite fine and you can see that there are material variations here so you can prepare a number of different materials for each board and there you have this parametric dimensions to set up so you can easily adjust this by dragging also pressing control you can control jumping just one meter or however you got the grid set up and we can also write this straight ahead just like that so this is really looking kind of like CAD application for architecture design, pretty convenient workflow. 
let's maybe make our floor pretty big because we're going for a big kind of industrial space. Let's tap in the dimensions. Maybe 8 meters times 8 meters should be okay. You can also edit the uh, sizes of the boards. So, for example, let's make it maybe a little bit longer, like 80. You can play around with it until you get the look that you're going for. I kind of like this one. When you take a look at the UV image editor and you select all the faces, they come already unwrapped. But the way we will treat the materials requires some tweaking of this UV unwrapping because, as, as you can see, every board is unwrapped to the full size of the texture. So in order to, to texture this correctly, you, you'll have to like prepare special shaped textures for for the boards to to get to get the look uh, of of the wood to correctly apply to the surface. So we'll change that a little bit. But you have to remember that uh, if you want to further edit uh, the floor, the sizes, the dimensions. Uh, you will lose all the UV unwrapping after any edit here. So if you got the final settings, leave it untouched. We'll be using just a regular seamless wood texture for, for this, so we'll need to play around a little bit with the UV unwrapping. And to do that, we'll just select all of the faces and unwrap them with uh, and unwrap them with just the First uh, reset the unwrapping and then selecting a single board, select similar normal so that we only selected the faces facing upwards, control plus to select these bevels here. And then we'll just smart UV project. You can see the boards are really next to each other facing the right direction. You have uh, different variations of the material here. So let's pick up the first one, press Use Nodes. Let's change this to the Node Editor. And let's change this to Principled Shader. Let's plug in some textures to the material. First, the basic color texture. And I'm using textures from CC0 Textures site. This will plug into the base color. Let's also get a roughness map, plug in to the roughness and set it to non-color data. And also a normal map to get some surface variations, but we need to plug this as non-color data and through a vector normal map node to the normal inputs here. We can go for the preview here to see how the material looks like. Let's increase the size of it a bit. Maybe the normals are a little bit too strong, so let's maybe decrease the strength to the half of it. Let's go to our floor and let's see to a texture view. The way it's unwrapped, you can see that it's very taking very little space of the uh, of the texture. Let's select all of these. Let's scale them really up like ten times so that the texture is more like real wooden boards. The benefit of like unwrapping this this way is that every board covers a different part of of the texture. Okay, so we've got our basic node set up here for the material. Now let's take care for uh, the variation of this material for all of the other boards. Let's make a group of these nodes, so select all of these. And let's control G making a group and you can see that there are group inputs so I added uh, an overlay node here for the texture of for the base color and from the group input I'll plug the link to the color so that we can uh, reuse this node group for each of the boards but changing just the single value of the color 
which will be overlaid maybe with a slightly uh, smaller factor. You can see we can call the node group, for example, wood, and just adjust any kind of color. If we just copy this material and paste it into the other one, so see that the same material is applied. But we want to get this uneven uh, feel to the floor, kind of like this. So you can see that we can lighten up some of the boards, maybe even giving it a little bit of hue shift. And then just keep on changing. And you can see that we can make all of these pretty quickly. The node group is repeating the same textures, but we're just changing the color. You can do crazy stuff with it, but we want this to be looking just like natural wood. I really like it this way. Maybe some darker ones will be useful. Now to see how it looks like rendered, we'll switch to GPU and rendered view. And as you can see, the lighting is pretty flat right now, so, so we'll just set up a simple environment map. I download it from HDR Haven. When we go to perspective view, we can see in a kind of like industrial space how our, flo our floor is looking right now. And I guess it's looking pretty cool. You can see in the close-up the little bevel space here. And we got variations of, of the roughness. So it will look pretty decent when rendered. Maybe we can increase some samples here for the preview to get better better view of how it will look like. In the final rendering looks pretty cool but it's very very clean the next step will be adding some variation like a dirt map uh, any kind of surface imperfections would make it great for the final render to seem less clean and cgi so pretty much like the floor how it's looking right now Let's see when it's reflecting some light from a window gets these nice reflections you can see the structure of the wood. Now, let's add some surface imperfections. For this, I also use a file from CC0 Textures to make this uh, affect every ma uh, material variation that we created here. We have to go inside our wood group and import our texture here, connect it with our roughness with a XRGB node. Just like that. Okay, so we plugged in to the mix node. You can see these patterns of dirt. So I've increased the preview a little bit to see the stains more clearly. Uh, now the effect is like super heavy uh, right now, so let's change uh, the blending mode to subtract. And let's decrease the factor to something small like 0.3 maybe. So that the effect will be visible, but just slightly. And as you can see now, we are inside the wood group that we created, and the dirt map here affects all of the variations that we prepared before. So if we switch, for example, the material to, to the different one, we still get the same variations. That's really the benefit of using the node group, that it applies to all of the materials using it. And you can create a new material and just add a node group and you can recall it and it's super useful for materials editing. So we've uh, connected this to the group and right now every board has this but we really want this to be a pattern that's independent to the boards. So to achieve the effect we'll go to mesh settings and here you have a tab that's called UV maps. And here you can make multiple UV maps for each object. So 
Let's add one, another one and let's call it dirt map. And right now, to differentiate which texture is using which UV map, let's add a node, an input node, UV map. And here you can set up the first UV map. And let's duplicate this and set up dirt map. We want our surface imperfections to use the dirt map and all of the others will be using the UV unwrap that we have created. So right now we have to unwrap the object again having the dirt map selected as the active one. So let's check out the UV image editor. Let's unwrap this project from view bounds. And we have a floor just like that. All of the floor with a single pattern. Maybe let's scale it twice. And let's change to texture view. And now you can see our stains. And let's see how it looks like rendered. Because you won't really see the pattern, but uh, just small like variations of roughness. So if you change the nodes once more, and if we s slide the slider up, you could see the pattern pretty clearly. Point three would be would be cool. So cool, that's it. We've got our floor ready, so we can build our interior. Going from the floor up, we'll build the walls, ceiling, and all of the other stuff for our loft space. So thanks for watching, hope you found uh, the tutorial useful and see you in the next ones. Don't forget to subscribe and if you have any questions or comments leave it down below.